the darkness at thy speaking it was done. Welcome to sermons from Zion Lutheran Church of Gwinner, North Dakota. Zion Lutheran Church is committed to the message of Christ crucified for the forgiveness of sins, for the church and the world. The following sermon is from Rev. Dr. Matthew Richard. In the name of Jesus, Amen. My friends, every single day, over 55 million, yes, 55 million people die on the planet of Earth. 38,000 deaths every single minute, and over 600 deaths every single second. Of the 55 million deaths from today, the majority of them will eventually end up being buried in the ground where they will be forgotten after several generations. Names will be forgotten, faces will fade from memories, the sound of their voices will turn to whispers, and the tombstones will be covered in dirt. If these dead people are lucky, yes indeed, if they are some of the lucky ones, someone will mow the grass above their grave and maybe even visit them from time to time. However, for most of these people, they will be forgotten Their tombstones will eventually crumble into tiny bits of pieces of rock due to the weathering effects of the weather. Yes, indeed, the majority of these will be forgotten as they are buried six feet under in the grave. Now, there's no doubt about it, my friends, that the world bleeds daily. Death knocks at the world's door every day, and sin pays out its wages. Death occurs every single second, Every single hour, every single day, 365 days a year, without stopping it whatsoever. Now, I do not have to tell you, this is most certainly depressing. It is indeed sad and enough to make you want to throw your hands up this morning and say, What's the point, Pastor? It's almost enough to make you kick the dust and say, Black, good grief, who cares? Let's just go home and go back to bed. If it is that much of a severity upon us. But despite this depressing reality of death, you are still here today. Yes, look around. Each and every single one of you are still here today despite the reality of death. You are gathered here in this church. And the reason why each and every one of you are sitting here today gathering in this sanctuary It's because of an event that changed everything. You are here because one man defied death. You are here because your Redeemer lives and overcame the grave. Yes, Jesus lives. And because he lives, he will stand upon your grave at the last day with compassion, with glory and honor and power. He will stand upon your grave because he will not forget you in death. He will stand upon your grave because he intends to undo death and raise you to life once again. So while the world is bleeding around us, and while the darkness of death hovers everywhere you look, you are here in this church service today because Jesus did the unthinkable. Jesus did the impossible He rose from the grave. In other words, if Jesus Christ, your Redeemer, were not alive, if he were not alive, you would have no reason to be here. You would have no reason to care. You would have no reason for hope. If Jesus were still in the grave, you would still be in bed this morning. However, because Jesus lives, Everything changes. Because he lives, you know that death does not have the final say. You know that the last day is not a day of dread, but a day of hope. In our Old Testament reading from the book of Job that we read just recently, we hear that at the last day, Jesus will stand upon the grave of Job and raise him up out of the grave to newness of life. Now, this is not some half-baked reincarnation where Job's soul will come back into an animal or Job's soul will come back into a different body. No, my friends, this kind of stuff is complete nonsense, the sort of thing that makes up fairy tales and sci-fi fiction movies. We also do not hear from our reading in Job that when we die, that we become annihilated 
that we cease to exist. But instead, we hear that our soul lives on to be reunited with our bodies at the resurrection of the dead. In other words, from our reading in Job, we hear that we can expect the Redeemer to raise our bodies from the grave to life once again. My dear friends, what our Old Testament reading is talking about is a full and a complete and a whole resurrection of the body. The resurrection of the body will be a complete resurrection. We will have resurrected bodies just like we have now. But get this, without the effects of sin, without the effects of death themselves. It's a 2.0 body, if you will. It will be a renewed body that will allow you to see the Lord with your very own eyes. Mark this, my friends. In death, you will not be forgotten in the dust and ashes, and you will not become an eternal floaty spirit bouncing upon the clouds of heaven without a body, but rather you will be raised from the grave, imperishable. Jesus has risen from the grave himself, and as Jesus has risen, you will rise too. As Jesus has a body and is, and is resurrected to life, you too will be raised with a renewed body unto eternal life. Indeed, this changes everything for you and for me too. And so today, we gather here in this church. We gather in this sanctuary. We gather to hear the bold promises that Jesus is alive and will not forget us in death. We gather here in this church to hear the valiant promises that the grave is not our final resting place. We gather here together to hold the Lord's promises against all appearances that even though our world is shrouded in death, that we will be raised bodily at the last day. In a way, my friends, you're gathering here together today is a gathering to protest sin and death and the devil. Actually, it's like this. It's much more than just a mere protest. You are here to laugh and to mock sin and death and the devil. It is a gathering today, this day, to declare that you are children of God. Dear baptized saints, you belong to Jesus because you are baptized into his life and his death and his resurrection. Yes, you are children of God, and you can gladly say this because the Redeemer lives. So today, yes, this very day, you and I confess with boldness, we confess this together, that sin cannot disturb our soul any longer, for our Redeemer lives. You and I, we can snub our noses at the evil foe, for our Redeemer lives. You and I can actually chuckle at death, for our Redeemer lives. Yes, today's service is all of us gathering together, gathering together to mock and to scorn and to snub and laugh at sin, death, and the devil because Jesus Christ, our Redeemer, lives. So my dear friends, lift up your heads this day. Lift up your chins. Smile. Laugh. And tell sin that you have comfort even stronger. Jesus is cleansing sacrifice. Lift up your heads, lift up your chins, and tell Satan that he can drop his ugly accusations because his tyranny is unraveled. Tell death that it cannot end your gladness, for it has been swallowed up in victory in Christ. Dear baptized saints, today we mock, we scorn, we snub and we laugh at sin and death and the devil because our Redeemer lives. And our Redeemer is our sure defense. Jesus is our power, our might, and our victory. Jesus Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father so that we might walk in newness of life. Jesus lives. This is most certainly true. This is the message of Easter for me, for you, and for the entire world. Blessed baptized saints. Alleluia. Alleluia. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Our Redeemer lives this day. Alleluia. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. 
Thank you for listening to today's podcast sermon. You can access a full manuscript of today's sermon from Pastor Matthew Richard's blog at www.pastormattrichard.org or visit Zion Lutheran Church's website at www.zionglinner.org. The Lord bless and keep you.